Idam this Shariram body Purushasya of the conditioned soul Mohajam born of ignorance Yata just as Pritak separate Bodhikam material Iyate is seen. Griham, a house. Yata, just as. Udakai, with water. Partiva, with earth. Taijasai, and with fire. Jana, the conditioned soul. Kalena, in due course of time. Jataha, born. Vikrita, transformed. Vinashati, is vanquished. Translation and purport by Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada. Just as a householder, although different from the identity of his house, thinks his house to be identical with him. So the conditioned soul, due to ignorance, accepts the body to be himself, although the body is actually different from the soul. This body is obtained through the combination of portions of earth, water, and fire. And when the earth, water, and fire are transformed, in the course of time, the body is vanquished. The soul has nothing to do with this creation and dissolution of the body. For what we transmigrate from one body to another, in bodies that are products of our illusion. But as spirit souls, we always exist separately from material conditional life. The example given here is that a house or car is always different from its owner. But because of attachment, the conditioned soul thinks, himself, thinks to be identical with him. A car or a house is actually made of material elements. As long as material elements combine together properly, the car or house exists. And when they are disassembled, the house or the car is disassembled. The spirit soul, however, always remains as, he, as it is, as he is. Mount Vishnu Vidaya Krishna Prasthai Vudai, Srimate Bhakti Vidanta Swami Tanamane, Namaste Saraswatunde Ve Gauravani Vicharane, Nirvi Shesha Srinivadi Paskatya De Satarne. Rani Kashibu is trying to convince his relatives that they're spiritual beings. And obviously it's not so easy. This conversation may have went on for half an hour, an hour. And they were convinced. So they're doing better than we are. <laughs> we'll lecture on this for probably, I think it was 59 verses, another couple of weeks. At the end, we're still convinced that we're the body. <laughs> of course, maybe Hiranyakashipu isn't the best person to take instruction from. But in any case, the truth is the truth. Whether it's coming from Hiranyakashipu or from Krishna or from others, the truth is the truth that the living entity is eternal. And only due to his attachment to illusion does he think himself to be temporary. An example is used here that griha medinam, that griha means house, and the first house we identify with is this body. Everyone's living in a body, which is their house, and thinking that their house. And that's expanded to, say, one's car, that I am the car. And in Sanskrit, that's aham car, I am the car. But actually, we're not the car, we're the Passenger, we're not even the driver. Krishna is the driver. Ishvara Sarabhutanam Rideshe Arjuna Tishtati Brahmanyan Sarabhutani Yantra Rudani Maya. I'm, I'm directing the wanderings of all the entities who are seated as on the machine made of the material elements. So Krishna is the one who's giving us our direction. He's the driver. The soul can make suggestions. Maybe we should go here or there. As Arjuna was telling our Krishna on the chariot, go here and there. But ultimately the driver was Krishna, the charioteer. 
So the super soul is eternally our driver, at least while we're in the material world. And we can't do anything without the help of the super soul. Therefore, the idea that we were ever separate from Krishna is impossible because we could never do anything without Krishna. We can never be separated from Krishna because Krishna is always telling us what to do. He's always giving us direction. And even in Brahman, that's, Brahman is still Krishna's energy. It's not possible to be separated from Krishna. So eternally, in some way or another, we're always with Krishna. Whether we were in Goloka Vrindavan or Brahman, whatever, still we're with Krishna. And now we're still with Krishna, but we're with Krishna's energy in such a way as we think we're outside of Krishna. We think we have nothing to do with Krishna. So that's called illusion. And being identified with our material bodies, we also identify others with their material bodies. And therefore we have friends and enemies, those who are Surin Mitya Udasina Madhwas Dvesh Bandishu. Sadushva Pipapeshu Samabudira Vashishude. Kyana Vigana Triptatma Kutasta Vijitendriha Yukti Chute Yogi Samalostrasma Kanshanha. Person is said to be situated in self-realization and is considered to be a yogi or a mystic when he's fully satisfied by virtue of acquired knowledge and realization. Such a person sees equally a pebble, a stone, oh, that didn't make any sense. He sees mud, actually the word is mud. mud he sees pebble, stone, or gold. What, are, what other word is there? Jnana vijnana chiptatnya kuta sevijitenya yukti shite samo samo means mud lustra asma means mud samo lustra lustra astra what is lama is mud and was astra kanchan is gold so there's something in between it he said a pebble or a stone and a piece of gold I don't see the big difference between a pebble and a stone <laughs> I also see a pebble and a stone almost equally. <laughs> Does that mean I'm self-realized? <laughs> As Prabhupada was in 1977 when he was almost ready to, to leave this, our manifested vision, he said, actually, he said, I have no desire to, to eat. Sex life is out of the question. And whatever. So he said, I must be liberated. <laughs> the beginning is to see the material world equally. In other words, everything is a simply combination or a permutation of the things taken by the natural elements. Now, when we talk about natural elements... Generally, people, when they hear the word Bumir Ap and Lovayu, they imagine that it's a clod of earth and some fire you can warm your hands over and air which is blowing. That's what we're made of. But no, it's actually when in the Vedic literature these elements are, act, are qualities more than they are simply the direct uh, one kind of physical substance that any substance that exhibits those qualities more or less is exhibiting to a greater proportion that particular quality of either earth, water, fire, air, and ether. Because within every element, all the other elements exist. Because they're all coming from the same source. They're all transformations of Mahatattva, or Brahma, which is a transformation of Brahman. So within earth, there's all the qual there's the, all the elements, such as earth is the quality of smell. Well, water, and so earth is the dense substance, we could say, things that are densest. And water is that quality, really, that holds things together. It's the elements of material nature that hold things together. And on the subtle platform, they also have their manifestations. Love is supposed to be a watery quality that keeps people together. Earth is the solid quality that gives 
people stability. When the earth element is disturbed, then people feel unstable. Their minds are unstable. And when water is disturbed, then people feel unloved, unappreciated, unconnected, actually, disconnected. Earth, water connects things. So on the gross and subtle, we, we generally think of things on the gross platform, but actually these things are manifestations of the subtle platform, of the energies on the subtle level. And fire is that things that transform. So when there's no fire, then there's people feel like get bored. Fire gives inspiration. Without some fire, like we say, you're in the fire, Prabhu. Get in the fire. Doesn't mean jump into a fire. I hope it doesn't. During the Saturday in the Shinga. <laughs> Homa, and so it's get into the fire, and everyone jumps in. You know. When Valati, Devi Dasi, and others were being initiated in San Francisco, I guess that was probably sometime in 67. Then after this fire ceremony was over, Prabhupada said, bow down. But they couldn't understand his accent, so they thought, they, they should blow on it. So how some so the, all the devotees got down and started to blow onto the fire. <laughs> Sometimes we misunderstand. So fire is a is the element that transforms one thing to another. In our digestive system, fire agni transforms our food into something useful into our body, and there are many different agnis within the body that make transformations to the different organs that we have, the different systems that we have, the digestive system, the nervous system, all these things are transformations by agnis in the body. And the first transformation is by the gastrointestinal system of making the food suitable to be utilized by all the other systems. So without that, we can't eat. And if we can't eat, life gets duller. And without transformations, being able to utilize, see things in different ways. So fire is also within our eyes. That actually what we eat with our eyes. Stop eating so much. <laughs> because Eating is a, is a source of digestion. We have to digest the light that we see. If we don't digest the light, then we can't see. So we actually have to digest it in order to see it. Subtle in a form of digestion, but it's also fiery. That's why sometimes people say, you're looking at me with a fiery glance. I can feel the heat coming from your eyes. That's why Vishwamrita Muni could burn an apsara. Because we can't even burn a piece of paper. We're not quite so fiery. But if you sat in meditation for 60,000 years, you might be able to burn a piece of paper at least. <laughs> but then again, you could just take a match and do the same thing. And as far as air, air is the quality of movement. Air is a quality of holding things up. It's because of air we're able to stand, we're able to sit because of air within our body. If the air in our body collapse, we collapse with it. Or if the air becomes disturbed, then we're not able to sit properly, we're not able to stand properly, we can't, we can't do anything, we can't move the food in our body, we can't evacuate, we can't receive, we can't do anything. We can't even open and close our eyes without air. So air is a very vital function, is a, oh, they're all vital within our body. And the quality of air, the movement, is, is the quality of being able to think. Fire gives us the power of analyzation, and air gives us the quality of memory, because without air, we can't store thoughts in some place. And in order to have memory, we also have to have earth. 
we have to have a place to store it. So air does the movement, fire does the analyzation, air does the movement, and, and earth does the storage. So they're all supposed to work cooperatively and harmony, and then the body is functioning. But if one of the elements goes off, then it becomes diseased. And they usually go off because of the doshas. Dosha means the tendency to make a mistake, to be in, in, unbalanced. So these elements combine together in the material world, the energies of the elements, as kapha, pitta, and vata, and they perform the functions, these energies, of movement, transformation, and stability, or manifestation. And we identify ourselves with all these things. And we think that this is me doing these things, this is I, and this is others also. Because it's a very intelligent, amazing manifestation, with, full of variegatedness. So when we talk, talk about earth, there's so many varieties of earth, and even our body is one of those varieties of earth. And as far as water goes, water includes all kinds of liquid elements that can hold things together, whether oil or regular water or juice or whatever. It's all liquid, and they all have the potential. Even if you have dough, for instance, you have a dough. You have the flour. In order to get the flour together, you can't just compact the dough together. You have to add some water. Try and make chapatis without any liquid. Just throw the, the dough, uh, fl- throw the flour on the fly- fire, and what will you get? You get sparks of fire. That's all you get. You won't get any chapati. But you add water; it'll keep the dough together, the uh, the flour together, and then you can actually get a chapati. So everything is like that, whether it's the earth or the water or the fire. Like fire is also radiation, electricity. All these things are manifestations of fire. Even our, as I said, within our brain to think requires fire. Therefore, there's histories of people actually self-combusting. Not only Sati did that, but even people somehow or another, they... For some reason or other, they just, fire emanates in their bodies and they get burned to ashes. Not very common, I think. But it's happened. People have actually self-combusted. Must be rather unpleasant. But anyhow, we don't have to, most of us don't have to worry about that. As long as we don't get too angry or fiery. So the conclusion is, although we identify with this body, but this body is nothing but the same elements that we see within material nature. And no matter how much you combine the elements of material nature, except in one place, does anyone know the one place where they've combined the elements together and they've gotten a a human being, they've gotten someone? There's one time it's happened. And no one knows? Yes. No. The movie Frankenstein. (laughs) That's the only time in the movies that they were able to take the material elements, combine them together, and put a little electricity in it, get a spark, a little spark, and then he, he started to move. Except for that, there's no history of any combination of material elements producing life. Therefore, our identification with this body is simply a product of illusion, because we never become the body. And yavat sanjayate kinchit satvam stavra jangamam shetra shetraga samyoga tedvidi bharatarshiva yavit sanjayate that yata yata sanjayate kama was that kinship kinship at any time 
यथासंजाते किंचि सत्वम स्तावरस जंगमा स्तावरा is i guess this, those things that don't move and jangamam things that are moving so we should know that amongst the moving and non-moving whatever is happening in this world is only a combination of the souls and the material elements of the spirit and the material elements there's nothing else going on here although it is, appears that something important something wonderful is going on in the material world or in this case lately something tragic is going on people have lost their jobs and so many yes it is all tragic from our point of view from the point of view of identification of the material elements it's not a very auspicious time or maybe it is auspicious because there was a picture of the jamuna and it was much clearer because the factories aren't working in delhi and so the pollution is less and so the river jamuna has a chance to if there is a jamuna there i don't know but at least whatever water is there you know the, the sediment has gone down and therefore it's purer now cleaner so people are not doing anything and therefore they they're disturbing material nature less so in that way things are in one sense cleaner and purer even in china when the factories stop and the air became cleaner so the virus is killing some and the air pollution was killing a lot more <laughs> so maybe probably the death rate has gone down since they've stopped polluting the atmosphere there in any case whatever we see is simply a combination of the moving and of, of the souls the super soul with the material elements that's all that's going on and com- combining and recombining and per- and making permutations so it, it appears that something important is going on but it's all just shrama eva he cable uh, the only thing that's important is when the soul agrees in some way or another to follow krishna's directions either through the vedas or directly through his instructions in bhagavad gita that's important that's actually worthwhile that's something really happening everything else is just nothing's really happening just dog chasing its tail even if you caught up with his tail what would be the accomplishment <laughs> but he's never going to catch up with his tail he's just going to run around in circles <laughs> chasing after his tail so in the material world people are chasing after happiness here security first thing they're chasing after is security but how can we secure in a place that's always changing your body's changing everything's changing where is the security and without security where is the question of happiness if you were giving 100 billion euros but you can only enjoy it for 100 billionth of a second what would be the value of it and 100 billionth of a second in proportion to eternity is quite a long time is relatively long 100 billion of a second compared to eternity 100 billion uh, or 100 years we could say 100 years compared to eternity is nothing and 100 billion of a second compared to 100 years is actually more significant So 100 years of enjoying 100 billion dollars has not no significance in terms of eternity but 100 billion of a second compared to 100 years actually has much more significance but who's going to want to enjoy 100 billion dollars for 100 billion of a second it has no meaning to us so similarly a whole existence here in term in compared to eternity is is meaningless only if it's utilized for Krishna's service can it actually have any value whatsoever the example given in the krishna book is that uh counterfeit money counterfeit money has no value it's counterfeit what can you do with it nothing but that doesn't mean that all money is counterfeit now if you have real money you can utilize it for a real purpose so the material nature when it's utilized for sense gratification is meaningless 
But when that same material nature is utilized in Krishna service, then it actually has some value and it produces something significant, namely Krishna consciousness. Harangi Kachibu is trying to convince his relatives that they're not their body, and he does rather a good job, so maybe we should learn from him and take his instructions, become convinced ourselves that we're eternal servants of Krishna, and then go out and tell the other demons on behalf of Harangi Kachibu that actually you're not your body either. Our, our supreme demon, Harangi Kachibu, he's, he's given us his instructions, and we're told to go out and tell all the other demons it too. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Any questions? Because you say demon nowadays, people get very asur- upset. So we say asuras. Tatsada manye surya vari deinam. And we should say surya vari deinam. You're not just an asura, you're the best of all the asuras. <laughs> then people won't be so insulted. Yes. I guess, uh, you mentioned these fire and <clears throat> other elements and doshas. Uh, so I, I've heard that we have one fire that digests uh, facts and truths. Sadaka, Pita, Agni. Agni. Yes. In Ayurveda, it's described that there is one fire that's uh, responsible for some apparently intellectual activity. Uh, would you can, can you expand on it a little bit? Do, do, do. Well, to, you know, we get thoughts. We have to digest the thought. To digest anything, to analyze anything, requires fire. There are five major types of pitta. There are five different types, major types of vata, five different major types of... So sadaka pitta is the, is the pitta, the fire, that helps us analyze and digest things properly. Yes? Uh, also recently I was asked why pranayama is um, sometimes described as dangerous, that we should be careful about practicing pranayama. Um, what would you answer to such question? Well, if you hold your breath too long, <laughs> and you turn blue, <laughs> that's not very good. You have to know what to do. Pranayama is meant to equalize the errors in the body. But if you practice in such a way as disrupt the errors of the body, then it's not very healthy. And so people can go to extremes. Or they can do it in a way which is not regular, which is, is like you can play the mudanga, it can sound very nice, but if you play irregular beats, you don't know you're irregular, you beat, then it sounds terrible. So regulation, pranayama has a purpose, and it's mainly to regulate the areas of the body so they flow in their proper direction, in the proper rate, the proper places. But if you start disturbing it and they flow backwards or they flow in the wrong direction, you can really disturb the body. So there's a science behind everything. It's like some people fast and they get rid of toxins, but they don't know what they're doing because they don't know how the air is, how the air is in the body are actually flowing. So they detox the liver by some extreme method. All the toxins, toxins get out of the liver, but because they, they're not eliminated because the channels are blocked, they just flow it in other in other places and make even a greater disturbance. So similarly, prana, which is causes things to flow in the body, to move in the body, if they're not moving in the right direction, the right way, you can cause havoc in the body. Anything else? Thank you very much, Kantara Shimad Bhagavatam Kidai, Shila Prabhupada Kidai, Gor Pramananda.